Hello and welcome back. So it's now time to do some uh, PHP. Yes, my favorite part of things. So we need to create uh, a database and then we need to create models to read from the database. Yeah, because remember this is model view controller MVC. So let me close all of these uh, files that I do not need. And boom. Uh, yeah, these are the points for me to remember. Now, um, let's go to the database.php right here. So this one is totally empty and this is our connector to the database. So let's add some meat to this class right here. Okay, good, 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 good. So obviously we want to add a class. So the class here will be a database connection. Yes, database. So I'll call this one database, like so. And it extends no other class at all. Okay, so we have a constructor here. Eh, I rarely use the constructor in a situation like this. So what we will do is change this to uh, what function do we need here connect yeah so we can connect let's make this private because we won't need to use this outside this class ever so i'm just going to say private function connect so how do we connect mm -hmm. let's create a connection here so i'm just going to say con is equal to so obviously we're going to use pdo because yeah PDO is just the bomb. Okay. PDO will help you connect to multiple databases. So it's a good idea to invest in learning PDO instead of using MySQLi. Still, we are connecting to MySQL. So we must tell it what driver we want to use. So we are using MySQL, full colon, and then we'll say host is equal to our host is localhost and of course semicolon and that's the db uh db name i hope what's the db name i forget these things it's called school db so school underscore db and then here we will add our string comma then the user uh, which is root for me and comma uh, empty password so if you're using mump this will be root as well so username and password uh, the host name so if you're on a um, uh, a live host you have to fi find out what the host name is and obviously you know the db name because you'll be the one to create the database so once we do this this should work but it sometimes does not work so let's put an if statement to curb that we don't want to run anything if the database doesn't work so let's just say could not connect to database now this is entirely up to you sometimes you don't want the the script to die and stop executing once the database connection is no longer there. So let's put a not there to negate this. If it doesn't work, let's do this. So you can figure out, maybe you tell it to return false or something like that, if that's your thing. So connect, connect. If things went, uh, went well, we just return the connection like so. Okay, so that con right there, we return it here. All right, so that's it for the connection. Once we make a connection, then we can add a few more functions. So let's add a function for reading. So depending on the situation, uh, this one will also be a private entity. So private, uh, in fact, instead of read, let's just say run. Instead of using read write, let's just use one function called run. 
and then we will have another function called query where we will run an actual query like so so run and then query like this okay good so this one will be public because we will use it outside and like this one so when we when we run something here uh, we'll see anyway maybe we may change this to public after all so here I want to run two things first of all a query and then an array which I'll call data I'll add it to an empty array like so this way this becomes optional sometimes even though the user does not supply this they but they must supply the query because it doesn't have a default value this one becomes optional so the way we are going to do this is we're going to use prepared statements because we don't want sql injection in our system so we'll supply a query that has placeholders and then we'll supply the data in a separate uh, variable which is this one that way the query is prepared first and then the data is inserted next that ensures that our data does not interfere with our query that way we cannot be hacked using sql injection okay pretty good so here the situation is simple all we have to do is get that connection by saying a con is equal to this connect like so so the reason we are using this again is because this function we are calling is from within the same class so we must use this like so so obviously this one will be present if something went wrong the whole thing would just die here so if we get to the next line it means this was successful right so let's just say uh, after this let's create a prepared statement so let's say a statement is equal to con prepare so we prepare that statement using the given query and then we must check if now before any of this let's just return false at the end here so that if any of the if statements in here fail we we'll just return false at the end so I'm going to say if statement worked out like so then we're going to say uh, check if things went well statement execute so here we are checking to see if things executed now if your query is one that isn't returning any information let's say the query is about updating uh, a row you don't expect to get any results from there so check will be no it's not so ir irrelevant because it may be true or false to show that the execution was valid it worked out but right where we execute here this is where we add in our data and then if check went well um, let's do this mm -hmm. so if the check went well we may want to return some data so i'm going to say um, statement again fetch all like so mm -hmm. now the thing is we can add a third parameter here to tell us whether to to fetch an array or an object so this is up to you what you want to be using so let's put a comma here and just say um, data underscore type will make it optional of course is going to be object now if you want this can be array so we'll just use this ourselves okay so object array now uh, here we're going to say um, type is equal to and let's just say if uh, data type is equal to object like this let's put a question mark and say if this is the case type is going to be equal to uh, fetch uh, 
underscore. Hmm, wait a second. I think instead, let's do it this way. Hmm. I'm going to say if like that. Okay. This is data is equal to like that. Okay. And then let's do that. So if data type is equal to object, as is the default, here we're going to say return a PDO uh, fetch underscore OBJ. And then we'll just do an else like this. And then do repeat this and put it here. This may have complicated things a little bit, but uh, it's useful sometimes if you want to easily change between the two. So this will fetch an array, this will fetch an object as a result. So object will do that, anything else will do fetch that. Okay, so if now the data is correct, so we're going to say if data, uh, actually I'm not sure here, it has to be an array, like so, and then we're going to say and count data is greater than zero. So if this returned value is an array and it actually has stuff inside, let's say return data like that. Okay, very good, very good. So this run will run all our queries just like this. And if there's a result, we'll return the result. If nothing, we'll return false, just like that. Okay, pretty good. Hmm. Okay, I think that does it. So let's see if we can actually read from our database here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, function query. Okay, so for a moment, we're going to change this to public so we can use it on the outside. Okay, or yeah, I think let's change it to public for now and let's do some experimentation. Okay, so let's do the experiments in the next video.